day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Welcome. Welcome to the day that the Lord has made. Welcome to worship virtually as we are spread out, the church scattered. And here we gather through Facebook and Zoom and through Spirit. We uh, appreciate your patience this morning as we had a few more technical glitches, but I think they're all worked out now. So I would encourage you to gather whatever it is that puts you in a spirit of worship. Maybe your cup of coffee, a, a warm blanket, a, a candle that you'd like to light. If you have your bulletin printed off so that you can join us because your prayers and your voices are an important part of what we gather up together to lift to the Holy One as a gift of praise and celebration. Today is what is referred to in the church calendar as Pentecost. That day after the resurrection, after Jesus ascended, where the Holy Spirit comes in power to transform the disciples from frightened men and women behind a locked door with no future, transforms them into people filled with holy power to proclaim and live the gospel and change the world. So get ready. Get ready to be come upon by the presence of the Holy Spirit as we worship as the body of Christ. worship. Call upon God's holy name. For in or calling, calling we, we are saved. saved. Listen. Listen for the wind of the Spirit. For in listening we, we find, find new life. Respond to the promises of Christ. For in responding we bring hope to our world. Let us pray together. 
wind of God, who awakened creation and stirred dry bones to life. Sweep through us and, and enliven our worship. worship. Wind of God, who descended as tongues of flame and gave birth to the church. Sweep through us and ignite our hearts. Wind of God, who guides our ministry and equips us for service. Sweep, Sweep through us and empower our witness. Amen. And now we will join together and sing him, Breathe on me, Breath of God. You should be able to find the words to this at the end of the document. And we're just going to sing two verses, verse 1 and 3. to heal and transform hearts. Will you join me in a prayer of confession? I will read the light type, and your response is the bold, forgive us, O God. Spirit of the living God, fall afresh on us. We rejoice in the gifts you have given, yet we confess we do not always use them to glorify you, for using the gifts of your Spirit for our own selfish gain instead of using them for the common good. Forgive for us, us, O God. God. For thinking too little of ourselves, not trusting that you have given us gifts for your service. Forgive us, O God. For believing that some gifts are better than others. For believing that some people are better than others. Forgive Ignoring us. how we each build up the body of Christ. Forgive, Forgive us, us, O God. God. Spirit of the living God, melt us, mold us, fill us again with your power and use us for your work so, so that, that our lives may glorify you. And we offer a moment of silence for each one in the quiet of their hearts to confess what it is you have. Amen. The Spirit who appeared as tongues of flame and alighted upon the awestruck disciples claims us as beloved children of God, that same Spirit who filled those first followers, giving them new words to speak of God's mighty deeds, that same Spirit rests upon us now, offering us renewed hope, renewed faith, renewed lives, 
Friends, believe the good news of the gospel. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. And now I would invite you to join as we sing the words that are printed right there in your bulletin, Spirit of the Living God. because the burden of your sins have been lifted, then you are free to use your energy to spread the love and the peace of Jesus Christ. I invite you to turn to those who are with you and offer them the peace of Christ. I also invite you to turn in your mind to those who are far from you and to offer to them the peace of Christ. Good morning. I hope that you can all hear me. As we get ready to hear the word of God, we need to pray. We need to pray that we could hear God's word to see it. For the scriptures this morning, I think, point to us to a time when something new was born. And when something is born, it is not without blood. It is not without a certain amount of pain. But when it comes, there is this overwhelming sense of new life. Let us pray together. Come, Come Holy Lord Spirit, Spirit. open the eyes, eyes of our hearts. hearts. Make, Make our, our bones burn with, with your word. word. Put your, your message of God's mighty deeds in our mouths and make them evident in all we say and all we do. Amen. Amen. So the two scriptures that we have this morning are from John chapter 20, 19 through 23, and from Acts chapter 2, 2 through 21. I actually preached from these two scriptures not all that long ago, right after Easter. And this is a, a story of, of, again, of a birth. But before that birth, there was a time of great fear and of hiding away. Right prior to John chapter 20, verses 19 through 23, Jesus has been crucified. Jesus was laid in a tomb. Three days had passed. And Mary had told others that Jesus had been 
released from the tomb that Jesus was alive. And yet the disciples were still hiding away in that upper room. And they were, to say the least, concerned. They were perplexed. They didn't know what to do. It is much like in our own times today as we think about reopening. Do we wear masks? Do we wear gloves? Is it okay to be just a little bit closer than six feet? Those disciples were all wondering, when is it okay to go out? Let's listen to this scripture. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews. If I could say anything to them, I would say, you have nothing to fear, for God is ever before you. And the Spirit will come to you, and you will be able to go out and do mighty things. I'm sure Mary was even more convincing like that to the disciples, and yet they stayed in that upper room. It wasn't until something amazing happened, something brand new. And so continuing, Jesus came and he stood among them and he said, Peace be with you. Can you imagine that? One whom you saw crucified, one whom you saw bleed to death, to breathe his last, to be laid in a tomb. And now this same Jesus was right before your very eyes. This wasn't someone who was sick and had died and had stopped breathing. This was someone who was mortally wounded and killed. And now he is right in of you, and he proclaims peace. Those disciples were in a world of chaos just like we are today. As we get ready to reopen and people are good and tired of being locked up, of not being able to go out and to make a living wage, riots are breaking out not only because of an armed, unarmed black man, another one killed by the police, but also because we are getting tired and we don't know what tomorrow is going to happen. We're restless. So were the disciples restless. It was chaos, and so Jesus had to speak to them and say, peace be with you. It just wasn't a gentle word. It actually gave them a sense of understanding in the midst of chaos. It was like when they were out on the ocean and out in the sea on their boat and the waves were tossing and turning their boat and life was chaos. And Jesus calms the storm with his peace. And so after this, he showed them his hands and his side and then the disciples rejoiced when they saw that it was the Lord. Jesus was real. He was physical, and yet there was something different because he still had his open wounds. This was not a ghost, per se. This was somebody real, but yet was very spiritual. It was of the spirit, meaning he should have been in the tomb. He should be dead, and yet Jesus is standing right in front of them, both dead and alive. And so Jesus says to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. This is interesting because all of a sudden now, Jesus is giving them a command along with that peace. He's giving them to, to say to go out into the world. Go out and be born. And as if he is raising those very bones that Ezekiel talked about, and those dry bones put on flesh, and they went out and are going to, to share this good news of everlasting life. And then continuing, he says, when he had said this, he breathed on them, and he said to them, receive the Holy Spirit. Receive the Holy Spirit. That breathing life into them. 
that spirit. This is more than the kind of spirit that we talk about that can rally a, a football game that's down by six points at the end and you rally it together and there's a spirit that comes and all of a sudden they start to make sense out of what they're doing and all of a sudden they make a first down and they're right inches away and that spirit is going and the cheerleaders are yelling and they do it. But this is more than that spirit. This is the spirit. That is God. We say that we believe in the Trinity, that there are not three gods, but there is one God. There is God the Creator that created all that there is, that gave very life. And the God who comes to us and walked as Jesus did on the earth and felt our pain and understands the suffering to let go and knows what death is. And now there is God ever present with us. God ever present, this spirit, that whatever you go, wherever you do, whatever you breathe, you breathe with the life of the spirit of God. We are not alone. And yet it is still fear that holds us back in those doors. And then he says this, if you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. This idea of sin. Why does Jesus connect this thing of sin? It is in this place where sin, I think, brings on the idea of brokenness more clearly than ever. It's not so much what you do as to the place that you are in life. When you are broken from God, when you are broken from yourself, when you are broken from your neighbors, the world in which the disciples are going out into is a broken world. I'm sure it is not much different than our world today. We don't know what tomorrow will bring. We are trying to figure out so many different things. We are antsy. And yet the disciples are being told to go out and unbreak that world. To connect it to the good news of Jesus Christ that God is with us and God will not forsake us. Yes, we will still encounter all the hard things of the world, of death, of hardship, of pain. And yet, through that all, God will be with us and God will help us to make sense of it. And there will be a peace that passes all understanding. And so now I want to read to you the Acts passage, chapter 2, 1 through 21. When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place. And suddenly from heaven there came a sound like a rushing, a violent wind. And it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues as a fire appeared among them. And a tongue rested on each of them. And all of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them ability. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living with them. And at this sound, the crowd gathered and was bewildered because each one heard them speaking in a native language of their own. Amazed and astonished, they asked, are not all of these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in our own native language, Parthian, Medes, Elamites, and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea, Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phyria, Philippia, Egypt, and parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jew and proselytes, Christians and Arabs, in our own language, we hear them speaking about God, deeds of power. All were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, what does this mean? But others sneered and said, they are filled with new wine. I'm going to stop for a moment. You see, the disciples came out from their locked rooms, and Jesus had breathed on them this new life. And so they go out and they speak with this new life. And when they speak, all can understand, all can hear. 
And so now it is up to each of those who hear to decide what this is for themselves, to write it off. Or could this possibly be true? Let's go on to hear what Peter says. But Peter, standing with the eleven, he raises his voice and addressed them and says, Men of Judea and all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and listen to what I say. Indeed, these are not drunk, as you suppose, for it is only nine o'clock in the morning. No, this is what was spoken through the prophet Joel. In the last days it will be, God declares, that I will pour my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Even upon my slaves, both men and women in those days, I will pour out my spirit and they shall prophesy. And I will show portents in heaven above and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and smoky mist. The sun shall be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the Lord's great and glorious day. And then everyone who calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. You have nothing to fear, for God is ever with you as the Holy Spirit. God is with you. So Joel is talking about a day at the end, the coming of creation, the coming of a new creation. But Joel is talking about that death that comes before new creation that part. I don't know what it was like for you when you first believed in the reality of Christ, of God among us, of the Holy Spirit. But for me, there was a kind of death. It was either God had to be real or I wanted to die because none of it made sense to me. And when I believed, I was filled with such light and new breath. I was given a new voice to speak. When my son Peter was born, he didn't breathe for the first minute. And as they took my child away, I thought that I had lost my son. But a miraculous thing happened. As they began to blow into his mouth and to give him air. His lungs filled up and he breathed out life and he lives to this very day. That is one kind of birth. It was a hard one, but he's alive. But we have a new kind of birth in the way that we live. We have a life that goes on even when we breathe our last. I was with one of our saints yesterday, who's probably in her final throes of this life, breathing softly and peacefully, having the most beautiful smile on her face. Not one of that you would say is of happiness, but one that exudes a sense of peace, of God's presence in her life. I can't promise you that you won't continue to go through hard things, but I can tell you, if you will live and believe and breathe in that Spirit of God in all that you do, you too will have that peace of God. Our job as disciples is to go out into the world and to speak this truth, that God is alive. It is not three different gods. It is all the same God the God that created the very rock of our being, the very God that understands pain and understands the finite with the infinite, the very God who understands life eternal. That is part of our life. We have nothing to fear, for God is ever with you. And today, this day that we recognize the birth of the church, as born of that spirit, 
That is the church. It is not the building. It is not how we are on the internet or whether or not we get to get Zoom to work. The church is where we are, where two or more are gathered together in the name of Jesus Christ. The Spirit lives around us and God is present. We just need to let the Spirit work through us. And this I say, Amen. Amen. <laughs> Thank you, Wendy. Thank you, Pastor Mark. <laughs> we have an affirmation of faith printed in our bulletin. If you would be so willing as to read it out loud, open your windows and say it to the world about you. Together. We trust in God, the Holy Spirit, everywhere the giver and the renewer of life. The Spirit justifies us by grace through faith, and sets us free to accept ourselves and to love God and neighbor, and binds us together with all believers in one body of Christ, the Church. The same Spirit who inspired the prophets and the apostles rules our faith and life in Christ through Scripture, engages us through the word proclaimed, claims us in the waters of baptism, feeds us with the bread of life and the cup of salvation, and calls women and men to all ministries of the church. In a broken and fearful world, the Spirit gives us courage to pray without ceasing, to witness among all peoples to Christ as Lord and Savior, to unmask idolatries in the church and culture, and to hear the voices of people long silenced, and to work with others for justice, freedom, and peace. In gratitude to God, empowered by the Spirit, we strive to serve Christ in our daily tasks, and to live holy and joyful lives, even as we watch for God's new heaven and new earth, praying, Come, Lord Jesus. That, there is a lot in all of that that we just said, but that affirms what we believe. And what we believe is what we do. I'm going to sing a song called Spirit of Gentleness, and you have it in your bulletins, and you can sing along with me. I'm going to sing verse 1 and verse 4. I know I've told this story many times, but uh, the gentleman who wrote this hymn, Jim Manley, is somebody whom I knew uh, from the very beginnings of my life. He was a pastor, and he was a student pastor under my dad, who was also a pastor. When Jim Manley wrote this song, he, uh, when my mother passed away, he came and sang this hymn for her memorial. the valleys of sleep and 
announcements today. Um, Wendy, I did not write down the announcements that we have this week, but I do know that we have a session meeting for the Chapel by the Sea on this coming Wednesday at 2.30. And then I know that we have uh, Phil Van um, Bruggen, who will be teaching our uh, Christian education class on the book of Colossians. We have now started chapter 2, so if you want to read ahead on chapter 2, and again, if you have not been a part of this class, I would encourage you to join it. Every week I send out the Zoom invitation for that class. It is excellent. Dr. Phil Van Bruggen is doing an excellent job. I am learning much. Um, other announcements, I don't think that um, Community Presbyterian Church of Walport has anything going on this week. Wait, Wendy is giving me the... Just to report on the, we continue to do the Saturday morning breakfast. That we will, con we are continuing to do Saturday morning breakfast and with the food boxes. I think that Wendy, you told me that you gave out 60? 47 40. breakfasts. 17 food boxes and four bags to uh, food for the homeless, for homeless people. Amazing, amazing ministry that is. Um, also, our plans for reopening. So when the session meets with Chapel by the Sea, we are uh, solidifying our plans of when we will reopen, but we can tell you this for both congregations, that we will not be coming face to face in worship until we enter into phase two. And then it's only when we have met our criteria, which both congregations are making now. And I think what we are and will be saying is that for both congregations, when we meet, at least through phase two, that we will all be wearing face masks. Once again, as churches are opening around the United States, uh, another new breakout has happened because of a congregation meeting together and not wearing face masks. Our sense of our, where we, we wear face masks, not for our protection, but it is for protecting others around us. You may be feeling great, and I hope you are, but still, we are trying to just be very careful of one another. And uh, our eyes can communicate a lot, even without our mouths being seen. But anyway, those are the announcements that I know if there's anything else. All right, prayers for the people. So many, I hope you can understand. There's Do you so wanna uh, share those, Wendy? Really and then I'm gonna have Wendy uh, raise up the prayers that she has been monitoring, and then at the end of that, then I will be doing uh, the prayers of the people that are printed in the bullet. Go ahead. Do you want me to yeah, say you can, these you pray? Can, yeah, you can pray, pray them. them. Will you join me in prayer? God, we lift up to you this basket of prayers that has come from your community. We do in pray for your beloved daughter, Anne Ladd, as she prepares to move from this life to eternal life. May you hold her in comfort and light. And we pray for Carol Morgan, as she grieves the death of her beloved partner, Pogo, we thank you that you have given him wings to fly to you and ask that you would hold her and all who have loved Pogo as they grieve. For this nation, God, we pray to you. We pray to you that you would change our hearts because we know that black lives matter. We pray for all minorities who are treated cruelly and who are excluded from the benefits of the system. We pray your hand on the violence that is happening across the country. We pray that you would, like the violence perpetrated on Jesus, that you would transform it into renewal and something new being born. We pray for those, the hearts and the souls of all of us who practice racism, who consciously or unconsciously hold our privilege as a stick. 
We pray for healthcare workers, scientists, environmentalists, all those who are making decisions related to COVID, decisions using that they may use their authority for the good of the world. We pray for those who are suffering from this COVID virus, from those who are ill in body, mind, and soul, from all kinds of things. We do pray, God, that everyone gathered here, wherever here is, would go out with your spirit. And Lord, I lift up to you a prayer of joy and extraordinary humble thanksgiving for 40 years with this adorable, fun, funny, strong, passionate, devoted disciple of you, 40 years of marriage with him, I give you thanks for every day of it and all the 40 that are going to come after this. And I also want to raise up all of our world leaders, our country's leaders, our those who are making hard decisions, but we also pray for all the police that are in the National Guard that are trying to figure out how to keep a community safe while listening, while listening to the protests that are having to make hard decisions. God, we know that right now it is hard for all of us to know how to go forward, but we know that with your spirit, we will. And so we offer our prayers through Christ who lives and reigns forever and prays for us in heaven, Lord. And so in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Through Christ we pray for the church. By your Holy Spirit, rekindle the fire among us. Teach us to prophesy, to tell your mighty work, to call upon your name for salvation. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our, our prayers. Through Christ we pray for the earth. Send forth your spirit to renew the earth. May your glory live forever, O Lord, so that all people may rejoice in your work. Lord, in your mercy. Hear, Hear our, our prayer. prayer. Through Christ we pray for all nations. Gather together the wisdom of all peoples. Enable us to speak to one another with truth. To listen to one another with understanding. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Through Christ we pray for this community. Teach us to honor the gifts we have given as manifestations of one spirit, one Lord. Let all of our activities serve the common good. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Through Christ we pray for loved ones. Pour out your healing on those who suffer your grace on those who need forgiveness, your peace on those who live in fear. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of all power and glory, receive these prayers and continue your mighty work among us. Through Jesus Christ, our living Lord. Amen. Amen. And let us continue our prayer with the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. God sends the Holy Spirit, gifting us with the ability to serve in a myriad of ways. We are given the gift of faith that enables us to live in hope, love radically, and to share generously. Let us give now to the Lord.
gracious God, your spirit rests upon us and drives us out to proclaim the gospel. You entrust us with your message of salvation. You grant us your vision and you make your dreams our own. You enlist us as ambassadors for no less than Christ. You, we are humbled and we are awed by the choice of us. Take these gifts as a sign of our trust and the symbol of our gratitude. Bless them and use them to tell your mighty deeds throughout the world. In the name of Jesus Christ, we dedicate these gifts to you. Amen. 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 The song that we're going to sing next is called Go to the World Out of Our Glory to God Him. They'll say him that I am not familiar with, at least the words are new, the tune you will recognize. And so we're going to sing verses. Is it one and four? I think we'll just say one and four. church in Park Ridge, New Jersey. It's just that he says this charge and this blessing in a very beautiful way. On Pentecost, may you find your heart singing with the Spirit of God, your ears humming with the voice of the Spirit, speaking in a language that reaches deep into your soul and with wisdom dawning on your mind so that the shackles that have hardened around your mind might be broken, and God's voice and language set free. May your communities and churches experience the coming of God's Spirit, anticipate it with joy and hope, give into it with love, so that when the day is done, all the world may know the love of God because of you. And so, I continue to charge you to go out from this place, breathing with the Spirit of God every breath that you take, and breathe in to others that Spirit of God, that they too would know the good news and could live understanding and knowing that life is eternal, and that love is at the very core. And so take this blessing with you, that you would know that you are a child of God, and that the kingdom of God is all about you, and that you would have eyes to see it, and to know it, and to live it. 